All right, welcome to the Fight for a Season podcast. I am your host, Matone, and tonight I'm here uh, in Elim in Lake County, California, with my cousin, but it's all in brown, and to, uh, our topic tonight is going to, um, we're going to just get into some stuff about our culture, and uh, shake head, and just ceremonies, and things like that, and um, just want to talk to uh, Mitzalwin on his views uh, of the culture, and where it's going today, so um, again, uh, this past weekend, we did have a ceremony, which was really great, and uh, we had we had some good blessings, and um, I thought it would be a good time for us to get together, and uh, record a episode on uh just the culture and and um what we were raised with so um first thing i want to get out is uh that's all we talked about today was um tonight was about just uh you know like uh, our tribe the pomo tribe um the shake it uh i just i really you know love the riggings that we make for for shake it i mean I, i've seen a lot of other cultures and you know all i what I like about like other cultures is like uh, I always look at what they have on, like you know their riggings and what kind of feathers they use, and I, that's one of my like even when I go to a powwow and they have dances there like between you know the grand entry and stuff like that. I always like to look at like how they make things, you know, and that's one of my things I like to look at. So um, just talking about uh, riggings to you, like um, you know, like what. What stands out to you about the riggings here for our culture? Yeah, you know, I, I think the big part for me when I when I look at um, the dance outfit and the riggings and and the detail in the work, yeah, what really stands out to me is is uh, the place we come from, our yeah. environment, and how beautiful it is. Um, and, and if we think about how things look 200 years ago opposed to today you know yeah. some of the materials change but there's still that beauty in the work yeah and and so i think when i look at the work it, it really speaks volumes to the world that we lived in you know yeah. and how peaceful and beautiful and and spiritual it was and still is and i think that's a reflection of that you know and i i think about all of the all of the plants that we used uh, just the dog bane, the milkweed to make string. Yeah. Um, you know all the different feathers, the the willows and dogwood to weave baskets and weave donuts for the, the headpieces. And mm -hmm. then you look at all of the um, the knots and the string and and all the different things our people knew how to do is a reflection of of the land. And I, I think it really makes me think about the spirituality of our people. You yeah. Know, and and I remember one time, uh, um, one of our relatives was, he was showing, um, at the ceremony, he was showing some of the younger boys how to do these knots. And, and they asked him, well, where did you, or who does that knot belong to? And, uh, and he said, it belongs to that string. It's not my knot, oh, yeah. it belongs to that string. Yeah. And it, it really stuck with me when he said that, you know, because yeah. a lot of times um, we want to claim ownership over things. And but remembering like that string a long time ago had a had a spirit had a purpose was made into something, and all these teachings came with it. Yeah, you know. So when I look at the riggins and dance outfit and and I see the work, it makes me think about some of the things that maybe I didn't get taught that come from another tribe. Yeah, you know, how they look at things, how they make things, and I remember um, several times being with my mom and people from the coast asking to buy some of her work, you yeah. know, and, and because of the detail and intricacy she put into it. And she would always say, no, nah, I don't want to sell it. You know, she wouldn't tell him that. Yeah. She would just say, no, it's not for sale. And, but she would always say like, I don't want people to take it apart, yeah. you know, and try to reconstruct it. And, and so I think that was really important to her that what she learned, you know, from her family and the basket where she comes from was to maintain some of that, that yeah. work. And, and it comes from, you know, families and communities. And, and so it really makes me think about, like, the, the beauty and all of the things that sometimes I think we miss, you yeah. know, when we get stuck just looking at what the end result is. Yeah. And but then when it all goes together, it's, it's beautiful, you know. And, yeah. and then even when we've um, kind of gone back to painting more, you know, painting traditionally and, and what that means, 
you know, and I know a lot of times we didn't always do that, but there was those, those, rare, those rare occasions where we did paint up, you know, yeah. and, and, and was asking for a little more, a little more prayer or a little more mm -hmm. things to come. And, and so, yeah, it's really, um, I think it's beautiful, you know, and then, and then there's the times too, where I see sometimes things that don't look too good, you know, yeah. and, and then it really, it really sticks out when it doesn't, but yeah. I think that's a part of, a. You know, always growing up around people who knew how to do all of these things, you yeah. kind of um, see things and think, "Oh man, that could be done a little bit better." You yeah. know, and and uh, how do we support people? You know, who want to try to learn the best way they can and and uh, are trying to get to that place. Yeah. You know, and but I think you know also going on um, having the opportunity to go to um, in, in the cultural resource and preservation field to go to museums and look at some old things. Yeah. It is really a, a uniqueness that came from this area, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's a reflection of the land and and where we live. And, yeah. And so that to me is what I, I think about, you yeah. know, when I see it and look at it and um, just kind of take it in. It, it just it's a with the Pomo, it's a um, like with our with the regalia riggins, as we call it, it's a lot of detail in it, you know, and a lot of and like you said, the knots and the way it's twisted and the way the feathers are bent and, and there's a lot of it's a lot of work into it you know and like like we were saying before like uh uh we were lucky and fortunate you know fortunate for us to grow up and to um you know being uh, uncle nelson being you know being around us and having his regalia and having it always access for us to use it you know and so as i as i uh, as i start to make things I really started to appreciate more mm -hmm. of before when I was dancing. And then like now I'm really looking at it differently. You know, like it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to take care of it, you know, and it just make sure that people appreciate, you know, what they have when mm -hmm. they dance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's like, it, it's like that with like all the parts of, of uh, the culture and ceremonies and, and uh, you know, cause there's, there's things that I, I can do, but I wouldn't say I'm, I'm uh I look to other people's ability, yeah. you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I admire it. And, and I know um, when I make things, how it looks. And I go, man, I, I, that could look a little bit better, you yeah. know. And, and so I appreciate when I see things that are put together with that, that yeah. love and that good intention and spirit. And, and it makes me realize how everybody had their gift to do something, yeah. you know, to make this all work. And because and I'm like that with, uh, you know, singing when I hear singers and there's certain certain singers that catch my ear, you yeah. know, and and I think it's really something that that I listen for, you know, this mm -hmm. whole time, this past weekend, listening to some of the singers and uh, the way some of the words come out and the feelings that I get, you know, hearing the songs. Mm -hmm. um, there's all of these different parts of it that everybody has a has a gift in, you yeah. know, which makes it this beautiful end result when it's all come together and it's all done, you yeah. know. That's what I do with like. Uh, like I, I make, you know, shakehead uh, riggins and yeah, there's some where I know some rigging makers who make it better than I do. And so what I would try to do is trade, mm -hmm. you know, like they make the best headpiece. So mm -hmm. I want one of their headpiece, you know, or, and I'll make them this, you know, like and, and, some, and they'll go for it, too. You know, mm -hmm. like you, you know how to make things, you know, and so that's one of the things I like to do. I like to see who makes the best things, you know, I mean, I make two, but I, I you know, I, I like to see what others, you know, what they make. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can trade. You know, it's like, yeah. I like to use that. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, he, even here in, um, you know, Cousin Al would talk a little bit about when he danced last, last night and when he was talking about the back piece, how we make it a little bit bigger. So when it sets on the head, it sets a certain way, yeah. you know, and, and it was cool to hear that, you know. Yeah. And so as you're hearing somebody who, who comes from, you know, our family and, the other side of the lake, but also from the coast, yeah. you know, and you hear a little bit of what they do, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you kind of learn those, uh, those crafts and those tricks of the trade and then thinking about like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to try to make a bigger hoop next time and yeah. see what happens, you know? Yeah. And uh, cause he was talking about how you, they would tie it, that hoop into the, you know, tie the flicker string mm -hmm. around that hoop to keep mm -hmm. it cinch you down. And then it made me think about Uncle Nelson, you know, saying, well, we wear it up a little higher so that way it will eventually slide down yeah. to be where it's supposed to be, you know. And, and so all of these different little, 
intricacies it really makes me think about you know yeah. dang who taught them that and why did they do that and where did they hear that how did that happen and then it's all like you say going through trial and error and yeah um, you know modifying things a little bit to to work but it's it's really beautiful when you get to hear and have those conversations about well this is how we do it a little bit different mm -hmm. and but it all has the same purpose you yeah. know and and that's what i was talking about like one of the things i want to bring up was like um you know, it. I, I've danced. We we danced. We've been dancing for a long time. You know, and uh, you know, since we can walk. Mm -hmm. So, um, I never really had my own stuff until I was like 18, 19 mm -hmm. years old. You know, and that's when I finally. But I've been dancing this whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, with the riggings that we had, mm -hmm. that grandma had, that your dad had, that mm -hmm. you know that we all had to use. But um, I felt like, you know, all those times dancing. At 18 or 19, that's when I was like, I worked my way to get my own stuff finally. I mean, you know, and that's how I feel like um, today. I, I understand like, you know, and I know it might, might be a touchy subject, but I understand like, you know, like jobs in Lake County in this area, Mendocino County, it, you know, it's just, they're hard to find. And a lot of jobs don't pay well. Mm. And, and. A lot of times on like on Facebook and posts, I'll see uh, uh, regalia classes, and there are certain things that I feel like shouldn't be a class, mm -hmm. and there's things, things that that can be a class, like um, skirt making. Mm -hmm. That that's a necessity, mm -hmm. you know. Like women wear skirts, mm -hmm. you know. And back in the day, all, they all wore skirts. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna have a, a, a sewing class and how to make skirts, then that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also, um, they do the basket weaving class. That's also a necessity. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you use that to, to make baskets, you know. Everyone needs to learn how to make one because you need to carry water or acorn mm -hmm. or anything, like, you know, baby for mm -hmm. the cradle board, stuff like that. But there are certain things I feel like um, that needs to be more intimate, mm -hmm. you know, than, than class, than more than like, Hey, sign up now. We got ten spots available. Supplies or you know will be sup no, will be provided. Mm -hmm. You know something like that for me because um, for me this the if I really want to dance or if I really someone really wants to dance, they're gonna collect all their feathers mm -hmm. because that's what I had to do. Like when I wanted to flicker, I asked my uncle Nelson, "You go get all those birds, and I'll make you a flicker." And it took me, like I said, it took me a year to get mm -hmm. all this stuff together. Yeah. You know, to, to finally get it together and finally put it together and have them. And then he made me do half the work. Mm -hmm. And then so when I got the flicker, I was very really like, I, I was going to take care of this flicker for life, you know, mm -hmm. because I worked my whole life, seemed like it, to get this. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about classes today, I understand that there's grants out there for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And it's in a lot of our people can use the money for to provide for their families. But I just want to make sure that, you know, we are following the right protocol with something like this. And because, like I said before, like to me, the most important thing about regalia making is the gathering of the mm -hmm. of, of the supplies and mm -hmm. feathers. So, I mean, that's one thing um, I think we should really look at closely. Yeah, you know, and I think that's that's the hard part is because the I, I think there's a, you know, the breakdown of of what's happened to us historically has changed people's idea of how to go about it, you know, acquiring the things you need to yeah. go through the process, and and it's it's really hard because, you know, I, I try to put myself in the shoes of people who didn't get to grow up in yeah culture the way we did in dance and in ceremony. And, and I imagine it's tough, you know, to go, man, like, I see the beauty, I see the people who come from this, and, and they're good people, and they do good things, and, and then you come from a family who maybe got taken and relocated, removed from their land, and disconnected from their culture, and then they go, we, we want that, too. We want to get back to that, too, because we yeah. see the goodness and the healing and all of that that comes with it, but then because we don't have like a, a cultural authority or a, or a body that says, this is how you have to do it. People just assume it's 
a free for all thing. Anybody can do it. Yeah. And I think a lot of times it's it's hard to have that conversation and tell people exactly what you said. You know, a part of becoming a dancer, there's a process and a protocol to do that. And it starts when you're little, you know, yeah. by by showing up, sitting on the sidelines and watching, observing, mm -hmm. seeing what's going on. And then people will know when you're ready to come out of the toolies, you yeah. know, and you're ready to help uh, Helema, or you're ready to help cut wood, or you're ready to help do the things that need to be done for ceremony to happen. That's your initiation to earn a spot, yeah. you know, and I think it's important that when we talk about it, it's like it, it is this, this dance society. It is this group of people that have put in the work and earned it, mm -hmm. and it's not given to them. You know, and, yeah. and I think the hard part, like going back to the classes, you know, it's it's the idea of helping our people get back to what's works works for our communities is a good idea. But the people who are making the decisions on how that should look are not even connected or didn't grow up in it. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's where a lot of the mishaps and mistakes happen. And then they don't talk to the people who've grown up in it. Yeah. You know, and, and it's because it's like, oh, well, these guys don't have a, a doctorate or a degree in this or in that. So yeah. so we don't talk to them. We can, you know, look it up in the book and buy the stuff that we need and, yeah. and put it in a box for somebody. And and I think it's it really devalues, you know, mm -hmm. the whole spirituality and it devalues the whole meaning of what it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, and and it's even as small as, you know, like trying to tell people like on the other side of it, you got to be careful because this does look good and it's it's attractive, it's it's beautiful, but if you mess with this stuff, like like things can happen, yeah, you know, and 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 it could make things even worse from where you're trying to get away from mm -hmm. and put you back into those situations where you're not healthy because you're doing things you shouldn't be doing, and it's hard to have that conversation with people who don't have a connection to spirituality or their connection is through church yeah. you know to try to be spiritual and it's a whole two different things yeah. you know and it's hard to tell people and because there's a certain community of our people who had to go to church to maintain some kind of connection to prayer yeah and it's hard to have a conversation with those people but but like you had said before, some of those people's kids are coming back and they want to be involved in the culture. Yeah. They don't want to be in yeah. going to the church or, you know, they want to do it a different way. And so helping them to get to the understanding of this is the process and protocol. And, and I think being humble enough to go like, yeah, I might be 17, 18 years old, but I'm going to respect, I'm going to sit down and watch for a couple of years and then, yeah. you know, earn the place, you know, and, and the opportunity and the responsibility, because it's not any anybody's right to go and be able to d be a dancer or a singer yeah. or a regalia baker. It's not your right. You got to earn all of that, you know, yeah. and and then take that responsibility and take care of it. And mm -hmm. so there's this idea of, like you said, we have the money, we can buy everything we need. Yeah. Let's just find somebody who will put it together for us and teach other people, you yeah. know. And and I think unfortunately sometimes you know our, our communities, like you said, are hurting for. Um, resources are hurting for jobs and they'll teach people you know yeah. and and might not even um, feel comfortable doing it themselves but they need to feed their family yeah. pay their bills and and so they do it with the best intention but then I always think about like are they gonna follow these teachings the way we try to follow them mm -hmm. and sometimes that doesn't happen you know yeah. and and I know like I said the time we made um top knots for the girls at Robinson. It was a, it was a struggle, you know, we did it for work and, mm. and the process wasn't perfect, you know, like, yeah. like, no, we just, we want the girls to have these and we wanted, want you guys to teach them. And, but there was no, nothing spiritual about it, yeah. you know, and, and we tried to like talk about spirituality and talk about before we made anything come in here in the, the right time and the right way with the right intentions but still not knowing where to go get what you need. Yeah. Like, how are you going to do it again? You're going to rely on a, <laughs> yeah. rely on a kit, you yeah, know? Yeah, supply box. Yeah. yeah. And that's the hard part, you know, is, and then like you said, is that's going to be the way these younger ones 
tell and teach culture. It's, it's from a supply box, yeah, you know, and there's no connection to the land. That's what, uh, you know, like when I was talking to my uncle, um, he was, you know, he mentioned that, you know, we're going to alter the future by doing, you know, this, something like this, you know, because we're going to change how the kids think about in the future about regalia and Riggins mm -hmm. by having, you know, these sort of classes. Now, um, even like for like when I was talking to um, our cousin Mike, you know, I, I told him like he w he also mentioned like uh, you know like you were saying like n this is nothing to play with, you know, like these the, the regalia that we make. So like if I were to take okay, let's say if I had ten classes, I mean if I had a class I'm gonna teach, and there's ten people that signed up, right? So do I know them? Uh, do I know who they are, or where their family come from? Mm -hmm. So, um, if someone would ever use it in the wrong way that I have taught, then I also make myself vulnerable because I'm the one to show them this mm -hmm. thing, you know, show them how to make it. So, I mean, again, like I feel like it, you just kind of put yourself out there also because you're not like I don't. I've never done a class before, but I'm like when I see the the flyers say, hey everyone you know come and sign up it doesn't you know there's no uh, uh require eligible requirements mm -hmm. you know so I, I mean again i don't know but i just do know that it's a lot of work to make to make regalia so again making classes it's like kind of skipping a little bit about mm -hmm. sp spirituality of it yeah and, and it is and, and i think that's the the hard part it's, it's like you know wanting people to to be a part of it and and they have to want it more than you want it for them yeah. you know and, and i think that's the hard part is is people want it to a certain amount and if you're if you can make it and help them make it and hand it right to them of course everybody's going to want it yeah you know they're not going to go oh man like this is a year-long process i need to start collecting feathers and when i have feathers enough feathers to make my headpiece then I can come to this thing, you know, yeah. and, and do it after I collected it and gathered my my willow for my my, you know, my donut or and, and but it's not. It's like everything's right here, you know, and, yeah. and and I think that's what makes it hard is is not learning the sacrifice. And and I see that a lot. Even even here, there's a lot of comfort and and it makes me think about like, man, we got the lights in the rigging room and they used to get ready by a fire yeah you know yeah and and then at the same time you know like this electronical world is is coming in there you know we got mm -hmm. lights in the the roundhouse and and to me it's it's hard when i see those lights come on it's like we're making it somebody's house now you yeah. know and and it's and, and and i started like thinking about this um so i had this dream years ago and and um and I came into the roundhouse. This is just a part of it. There's a lot more to this dream. But I came into the roundhouse and there was a light switch, like those old lights you pull down the string and the light pops on. Yeah. There was one of those in between every one of the poles. And when I went in there, there was couches. And so there were people actually living in the roundhouse. Mm -hmm. All between those poles, there was families living in, in there. And they had TVs in there and these lights. And it was like their normal house, you know, and I and I looked in there in my dream and I knew that was wrong. Yeah. You know, I looked in, and I go, this is not right. And and later on, you know, fast forward to today, that's going to be what it is if we continue to put all of those modern things in there. Yeah. You know, and and so at some point, you know, for us to let this thing get to where it's supposed to go, we got to start removing some of those things. Yeah. You know, because. I know from other ceremonies, you know, that when those lights come on, our, our, those spirits leave, yeah. you know, and, and it's at some point we forget about that because we're caught up in what's been done before us. And of course it was, uh, I think coming from a time, you know, where like our parents grew up with no electricity here. Yeah, no water. You, yeah, no running water. And yeah. then to have it, it's like, oh man, like we got this, so let's use it, you yeah. know? And, and so, but then I think finding that balance of, like it's good to have it if we need to be in there to make something and it's in the nighttime, you know, but not when everybody's in there, you yeah. know, I go, but that's maybe when we use it, but it's just like a kind of modern thing that we get caught up in 
and then it teaches, like you said, the next generation, this is how it is, yeah. you know, and this is what it's going to be. So maybe next time we'll have speakers in there, you yeah. know, <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and that sounds way out there, you know, but it's kind of <laughs> like if we don't say this is the limits or this is where we're going to stop with it, then it can go to that, you know, because yeah. it's like the modern comforts. And, and I think that's the part, too, of even when we're talking about people who want to learn, there's, there's a whole process of like becoming, uh, in a sense, like a pupil to somebody, you mm -hmm. know, they're going to mentor you how to do this and mentor you in this so that yeah. you learn, you know, and, and that's what I've, I've tried to do, you know, just like figuring out on my own. Like mm -hmm. if people ask me like, Hey, can you teach me some songs? I have to think about exactly what you said. Well, if I teach you, you know, like I'm putting myself out there too, you yeah. know, and if you sing this song and you don't say, hey, this song comes from so-and-so. Somebody's going to ask you, well, who said you can sing that? Yeah. And then, you know, my name comes out of their mouth and it's <laughs> yeah. like, well, I told you you're supposed to say this, you know, and yeah. you don't. And it can cause, you know, like hurt feelings yeah. or whatever, you know. So it's important that when we are helping people and mentoring people to remind them of the responsibility that this is, you know. And, and I think, unfortunately, like we're not at that place to even have those conversations because a lot of people think it's the right to do it because they're pomo you know yeah. and so and there's another thing like i've heard that word too I've, i i don't know if you heard it before but you know like if we're gatekeeping or you know storytelling keeping i you know th that's something that i have try i'm not trying to do mm -hmm. you know i'm just i as you know as i got older and i started making regalia uh, the appreciation of it is what you know i really took in when I made it and so made stuff so I just want to make sure that with the classes that that is gets in there if it could you know when it could I'm, I'm sure it's still going to continue um, but it's just something that we all need to look at you know when we make these have these classes again like like with you I, I know you all my life if you want a flicker you're going to have a flicker because mm -hmm. you're a dancer I, mm -hmm. I know you I know you you know we, mm -hmm. we're related and, yeah. and I We've been dancing for a long, so whatever you want, you know, but I couldn't do that to anybody else, you yeah. know, like, who are they, who are they, you know, where they come from, mm -hmm. you know, who's their family, mm -hmm. so again, having a teaching, or um, even having a teaching just, you know, at a college, that's, that would be something that I hope, you know, they, again, they look at, because again, it's, it's the pre uh, appreciation of it, mm -hmm. and if, you dance through it, and like you said, you know, if you if you trying to connect back to your culture, yeah, it'd be good if you were some uh, you had a mentor. Yeah. Because then from there you could learn. But mm -hmm. if you just jump right in, and you know, that's something that um, that happens. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, this this culture, the you know, the shake head and the feathers, the flick, it's all beautiful. I yeah. mean, of course, everybody wants to get involved, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but. There's just a certain steps that I just want to make sure that we don't skip. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's having, you know, that respect. And, you know, I, I had this conversation um, on Thursday um, with a member of the, the tribal health staff. And, and um, he wanted to do a, a drum making workshop, mm -hmm. you know, and he asked he asked me, he said, hey, would you uh, would you be willing to come up and, and help out? Because he asked if I know how to make drums. And I said, yeah, I've I've made drums before. And. He goes, well, would you want to come up and teach about it? And I was like, like, well, what do you mean teach about it? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, I haven't figured it all out, you know, uh, but like, I would like you guys to come up and talk about it. And I said, well, we got to like, and, and he's not from here, you know, he's not mm -hmm. tribal from here. And I told him, I said, well, the, the first thing I said, you need to understand is that that hand drum is not from this area. I said, it doesn't come from here. I said, our drum is in the ground. Yeah. And I go, so that's the first thing I said. And, and I know tribal health serves, you know, tribal people and from all different tribes. I go, but I go, you got to be careful in how you go about this. I go, and I go, for me to come up there and talk about it, I said, I'm, I'd be talking and speaking on something that doesn't even yeah. come from my culture. So right. I wouldn't do that. You know, I said, I've learned from people that where that comes from. And I go, and, and if possible, you should get those people to come and talk about it. And, and so he kind of looked at me, and I said, and, and, I, and I'm saying, I'm telling you, I don't, 
I'm saying I don't want to help. I'm just yeah. saying we should go about this the right way. And if I'm going to be involved, we need to go about it because the last thing I want to do is appropriate from another tribe's culture, you know, and say yeah. I can speak on it when I can't. Yeah. I go, just because I've made one and I've used a hand drum before doesn't mean I have the ability to speak on that, Yeah, you know, and and I go, and, and so that's what we got to understand first. And, and so earlier uh, when we came out for the Healing Together conference, he was out there, the same guy, and wanted to do clappers, kind mm-hmm. of the same thing. Hey, let's make, have a clapper class. And I said, well, I go, well, for who? And he goes, uh, oh, for young kids. And I go, well, well, we couldn't do that. I said, those things are earned. You know, there's a whole process of earning that mm-hmm. to become a singer. And, and I go, so you don't just make them and give them to kids, you know. And mm-hmm. I go, because if a kid's walking around with that, that tells us that know that this guy is saying he's a singer. He's making the statement that he's a singer because he's carrying this around. Yeah. You know, and I go, and so that's not a thing to do. And, and then I found out he asked a few of other of us, you know, mm-hmm. you know asked Tony and um, Kyle and they kind of all said the same thing. No, like we shouldn't be doing that. And, yeah. And so he was kind of, I think, asking until he found somebody who would say, yeah, oh, let's yeah. do it, you know. And, <laughs> and, but we all kind of gave him the same answer, which was pretty good because I didn't know that until after I shared that. And, yeah. and I think that's the part of like us who grow up in it and sticking together, even like say we didn't plan to say the same thing, but we all pretty much said the same thing. Like this is something special that needs to be earned, yeah. you know. So I think that's a, a big part of, again, like you said, not trying to... Um, gatekeep but let people know that there's there's rules and process to all of this you yeah. know and that's important and and i think when people see you value that though like like the teacher will be there when you they see that you know that yeah. somebody wants this and they're they're doing their best to learn and they're taking the time somebody will come over and help them you know they won't go hey you know fill out this paperwork and then maybe i'll let you be you know somebody i teach and and, but a lot of times it's kind of like, that gets lost, yeah. you know. But I, I've had someone, you know, um, I've had um, asked to me before, you know, um, give me a call and say, hey, we're having a class on how to make um, a, a woman's headdress. What, what supplies do we need so I could get it ready for our class? And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't tell you that. I mean... I, if you come over and we could talk about it, you know, and, and we could talk about what it means and what it, what it, you know, why we dance it, and then yeah, I'll help. But if you're calling me over the phone to ask me what stuff you need because you're gonna make a, you know, a supply box, yeah, I can't do that, mm-hmm. you know. And and I hope you guys, uh, I hope your class goes well. But that's something I can't be a part of, yeah. you know, because to me again. It's the spirituality of it. Like it's not over the phone, and you know, like I'll have, like for example, I had, you know, like a, like I make flicker bands, mm-hmm. and it was like, hey, can you record and how you make a flicker and send it to us, so we can make a flicker? Like, no, I can't. Yeah. That's something. I, I mean, again, I'm not trying to keep it to myself. Yeah. I'm just saying that's something I I can't do because I take too much, um, you know, spirituality in it to make it. I can't do that over a video or mm-hmm. I can't show or well, who else is going to, who else is going to see the video, yeah. you know, and just things like that. I just really worried about, um, the spirituality of it again, mm-hmm. of it being skipped. That's, that's yeah. one of my main concerns. Yeah. Is. You know, and it's interesting like cause I, there was a, um, there was a post on Facebook and it was the California tribal college and they had a, uh, like a posting for, for teachers. Yeah. And it was like regalia, drums, and beating, and like all of this different stuff, and and uh, and it kind of bothered me, you know. I, I left a comment on there about, and it was specific to regalia making for for shakehead, and and I I asked a few questions, like is this like the college's attempt to have somebody come in who knows how to make regalia and say they can make regalia for every dance tribe, you know, every tribe, yeah, and and uh, they didn't respond. And so I was like, I'm gonna call them, you know. So yeah. I waited a couple of days, and I ended up calling and and asked, and and uh, and I was like, so how do you, how do you guys, like, who who are the people that are gonna verify that these people are cultural people and know how to do this, you know? Like, what yeah. is your process? And like, oh well, we're gonna, we want them to have a letter from their tribe saying they're a cultural leader, 
And I just kind of like listened, you know, and yeah. I was like, I go, well, the, the tribal council doesn't own this, you know, I go, this is, this is stuff that's come down, you know, through families and cultural leaders. And, mm -hmm. and I go, it's in, inherent and it's passed down. And I go, so how do you guys put yourself in that place of authority? Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, well, it's not like that, you know, and, and I go, well, what is it? I go, that's, I go, that's what I want to find out, you know, and. And I said, because to me, I go, like, if somebody is trying to teach regalia making to somebody who's never been involved, I go, there should be some sort of consultation between you guys and the tribal people who are still doing this. I go, wherever they're from, yeah. I go, and I'm just speaking for myself and my community, and, and I go, on, but mostly on how I feel about it. And, I, and the kind of response back was like, oh, well, the intention was not to make ceremonial things you know and like the stuff we were going to make isn't really spiritual yeah and it kind of threw me off you know and yeah. i was like well why are you even asking you know like like why are you putting it out there like you're trying to like why get certification then, yeah you yeah. know and I, and well the intention is not to make anything spiritual and sacred and i was like that is the weirdest answer i <laughs> yeah. got you know and i just kind of said, well, you know, thanks for the clarification. And, you know, like you guys really should talk to some elders, you know, about it. And, and it really just let me know again, like this is our own tribal people who are doing this yeah. and not even considering like what the outcome can be, mm -hmm. you know, like we got the funding, we want to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. They got funding and some other college down South tribal college was doing it and yeah. they wanted to model it, you know? Yeah. And I was like, it, it doesn't work like that, you mm -hmm. know? And, and then the first thing I asked, well, who are, who are the representatives from all the tribes that are, you know, you guys are talking to? And it's like, oh, well, it's just our, it's our, um, our California Tribal College Board who are making the decisions. It's like, yeah, you guys need to talk to some elders and yeah. before you like do that. And, mm -hmm. and it just surprised me, you know, it just like uh, how sometimes things just, like maybe the idea is so big and like we can do this, we forget about like, talking to people about it, you know? Yeah, and then, like, there's so many different Pomo tribes, you know, and, like, I know in, in uh, on my mom's side, you know, on Apache side, um, there's White Mountain, there, you know, and there's there's St. Carlos, you know, and there's, there's Bailish tribe, you know, Apache tribes, mm -hmm. and not all the ceremonial uh, regalia that they wear is the same. Mm -hmm. You could tell that's White Mountain's moccasins. Mm -hmm. You could tell that's St. Carlos moccasins. You could tell that's violet crowns, you know. So I mean, it, they're all different. So like, here with you know a class, let's make all. Well, how how many different pomos are going to show up? You know, are, are we showing them the same? Is it a universal thing that yeah. we're making then? Because um, each tribe is different. You know, like I could tell which ones upper lake. I can tell which mm -hmm. ones, you know, elam. Mm -hmm. So with these classes is it going to put everything together mm -hmm. that's you know that's another thing i would yeah i was wondering about yeah you know and it's it's like uh i i think that's the part of it is is like to somebody that doesn't know like even myself you know seeing seeing the crown dancers and and knowing that there's differences but even looking i can't tell it yeah i can't recognize that you yeah. know because i didn't grow up around it and i, I won't know what to look for and it's the same exactly with what you're saying with here. Like everything might look the same to somebody who doesn't know or doesn't recognize the uniqueness. Yeah. But there are differences, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the the part that gets missed when people are just saying, oh, well, we can do it like how these guys do it. And because I ask people like um, I asked some of the people up from Covalo and um, different dancers like, hey, why, why are you guys wearing draws now? Mm hmm. What is your guys' is teaching? And they don't have one. They just see other people doing it. They yeah. see us doing it. Yeah. And they see Grindstone doing it. And they just do it, you know? And, yeah. and I go, well, there's a teaching of why we wear those. Mm -hmm. And I go, but the old way was to be painted a long time ago, yeah. you know? And I go, and, and because we couldn't do that no more, this, this is what became. And so that's something we did in mm -hmm. our place. And I go, and, and so that's unique to us and, and to Grindstone and, I go, so you got to think about what you're doing instead of just doing it, finding out why, you know, and, yeah. and then even like the breach class, how we were talking last time, how, you know, Uncle Nelson really introduced that. And now everybody dancing wears a breech cloth, you know, yeah. and, and that's not, 
that's not how it was, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's really interesting how when people don't ask, they just start doing what they see and don't even know why they do it, you know? And, yeah. and I think that's the hard part of talking, trying to talk to people and share like, well, this is how this happened. This is why this happened. Mm -hmm. And, and I know a part of it too, because if you think about, uh, you know, wearing the diaper with no drawers on, people might go, dang, these guys are like naked out here, yeah. you know? And like some people yeah. will get offended, you know? Yeah. And, but our people didn't see things like that, you know? It wasn't mm -hmm. in that fashion. It was, this is how it, how it is, you know? Mm -hmm. It's natural and, and, but I think that's the part of, when I see people doing stuff, I'll ask them, well, what, why do you guys do this? To see what their response yeah. is, you know? And, and a lot of times they don't have a response, mm -hmm. you know? They just start doing it and, and even like with people holding rock, you know, I ask them, well, how do you guys hold rock to these songs? And how do you guys do this? And, and sometimes it's just, oh, well, nobody told us. We just do it, you yeah. know? And I think those are the things that really like uh, at some point, you know, that's going to be somebody teaching. We're doing this, but we don't know why. Yeah. You know, and, and so what else do we, are you teaching that you don't know why you're doing it? You yeah. know, that's how like even like, um, the coast promo, like the the one I'm known the most was Point Arena, you know, a long time ago, and um, they didn't wear they didn't wear head nets, mm -hmm. you know, and they 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 danced without head nets, mm -hmm. uh, and then they wore the black vest, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I thought was was cool. Yeah. Like if you wore the black vest, like yeah. oh yeah, that's Point Arena, yeah, mm -hmm. they're coming out, and that is something they put together themselves. Mm -hmm. But you know, things change. They don't have the black vest no mm -hmm. more. They don't, you know, they most of them. Sometimes they wear net, sometimes they don't, mm -hmm. but they're all mixed. But before, everybody kind of looked the same, mm -hmm. you know, like like uh, the breech cloth, you know, and then the diapers and then the nets. So mm -hmm. you knew which groups, you know, but I think, again, with the classes and it being available, mm -hmm. then everything's kind of coming the same. You know, yeah. everybody, everybody's doing the same thing, even though we're from different areas, mm -hmm. they're starting to look the same. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, and, and it's that part of... Um it, and I asked one person this one time, I said, uh, they were dancing and they were from, from uh, the coast. And this is the first time I've seen this person have the horns the way we wear the horns. Mm -hmm. And then they also had the horns in the top. And I was like, I go, how come you're, like, why are you wearing your horns? Like, you're wearing horns from, like, how we do at the lake mm -hmm. and how you do at the coast. I said, so what's, what's the story behind that, you know? And he said, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm from... The lake and I'm from the coast and so I want to represent both of my tribes and I was kind of like well that's who you are you know you got that lineage but this the way you dance is supposed to be that way for that outfit yeah you know and if you're going to dance over here in Lake County then you dance the way the outfit is over here you don't get to choose to mix that because you want to yeah. you know and, it's, <laughs> and it was kind of like when we're having that conversation and then I was trying to have that conversation in, in the best way I could and and but I could tell he got a little bit offended you yeah. know and and I go I'm just trying to understand you know how did you know how did you get to that place where it was okay for you to change it for you and not a thing that that's what you guys do you yeah. know and and I think that's the hard part is everybody is saying well I'm, I'm a part of all of these tribes so I get I, I get to represent all of that yeah you know but you're the spirits of that land so that's what you're supposed to be mm -hmm. you know and and i think too much uh individual preference comes into it you yeah. know and and then that story of why we dance like this or why these songs are like this gets lost because i, I want to look how i want to look yeah. you know and it almost is uh sometimes can be like harmful you know yeah. and, and uh and it's like you know me going Shoot, I want to rig up like the coast, even though there ain't no coast songs being sang. You know, yeah. I want to do that because I want to do it. You yeah. know, and 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 then where's the respect and value for the elders who taught us these things? You know, yeah, that's the same way that goes with like um, with singing. You know, because a lot, uh, I know a lot of people uh, would um, ask my 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 dad. You know, like, hey, can you can you write the words down? You know, so we could sing these songs. And I told my, when my dad told me, I told, you know, dad, remember, like, I, I sing with my dad and I, you know, we sing. Mm -hmm. And I told my dad, like, I, I've never once, like, asked you to write the words down for me because I learned by going with you. Mm -hmm. 
I learn by going to ceremonies and listening. And that's how I learn, you know, to sing and know the songs. So um, if you put it in a book for them to learn, then they're not taking the time to go to the ceremonies or go to big times because they're just going to go off the book that they have mm -hmm. and, and learn the songs. And my, my father agreed with me. He was like, yeah, you know, they need to just come and either dance mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or just come and watch mm -hmm. for them if they want to learn how to sing. Yeah. So that's one of the things, too, that I know that comes up because mm -hmm. I've seen booklets, you yeah. know, and I'm like, um, you know, if, if it goes into the wrong hands also, you yeah. know, like where, you know, who's going to get it, you yeah. know, and who's, who knows where it comes from also, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. that's another thing that, you know, that we got to make, be mindful about for yeah. the future. Yeah, you know, it, and that's the, the hard part. It's like, uh, you know, we forget about all of these years, like our, our people being exploited, you know, our culture being exploited, it, parts being taken and, and used in other ways. And, and, and you're right, because if it does get written down or even recorded and given to one person and they give it to somebody else, and then you lose control of who has access to it, and then you you have these like these new agers singing these songs up at the mountains or wherever at yeah. their retreats and selling it, you know, yeah. and and that's what happens. And and I think that's the the hard part of of like trying to think beyond that and how to do this responsibly and teach responsibly, because a lot of times, you know, people can say, oh yeah, well we do have money if you can do this, and yeah. and sometimes that's what somebody needs or maybe they're in that moment where they need something. And they go, yeah, okay, well, I can, I can do that, you know, yeah. and, but not think about what we're complaining about, you know, our, our songs are, you know, sacred, and, but then we make them accessible to the wrong people, and not that that's the intention, but it can happen, yeah. you know, and, and I think that's the part, I, I think, for me is, you know, it wasn't until I was about 18 or 19 when I first started singing publicly, you know, or mm -hmm. at ceremony, but I started singing to myself, you know, like we do, we're young, we sing yeah. to ourselves and sing our favorite song we mm -hmm. want to dance to. And, but then to get up and do it in ceremony is a whole different thing, you yeah. know? And, and I, and I think about how I got to that point and it was exactly what you said, being there and listening to singers and remembering who, who sang songs that I liked and then going, man, I heard this person sing. And then like now looking back on it, cause a lot of those people have, have passed on. Yeah. You know, it was a it was a blessing to hear some of these singers that yeah. I got to hear. You know, there was some singers I, I I got to sing with that a lot of people didn't get that opportunity to and and, and that was all a part of that kind of that growth for me. Mm -hmm. But I know even before it got to that singing it was listening, like you said. You know, listening to the songs and then being there dancing or being there in, in the Helema and learning the tones and the tempos and how the songs go. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, eventually get into that place where, you know, you're singing. Yeah. And, and that's what I always tell, like my sons, I, I say, you know, the, the easiest way that I learned the helamas to all the songs is by doing helama, yeah. you know? And then I knew all the, the helamas to majority of the songs. And like, now I have to think about it before I used to try to, to pride myself on like you just sing the song and I'll, I'll know what the hell am I is. Yeah. And then, then certain times it'd be different singers from somewhere and I would ask because yeah. I didn't want to mess it up. But if it was here and singers from here, from the lake, um, then I, I pretty much felt like I knew what the hell am I would be to the mm -hmm. song. But then if it was somebody else, I would ask, you know, and because I didn't want to get it wrong either, you mm -hmm. know, and out of respect would ask. But I think that whole process, you know, started way before I even picked up a singing stick you know, yeah. that, that process of learning. And so I think that's why it's important, like you said, that, you know, show up. You know, if you yeah. really want to learn, show up, because you can learn from a book, but that doesn't mean you're going to get everything out of it. Yeah. You know, you might see the words and mispronounce them yourself and start singing the songs wrong, you yeah. know, and, and so much can happen. Mm -hmm. um, but just showing up is the best way to do it, you know. And I think that, like you were talking about earlier before we started, you know, this podcast is like uh, about your son and like my father, like, you know, my father was a great singer 
And when I sing with my father, I try to uh, out sing him mm -hmm. just because I wanted to show him that I could sing. Yeah. Not, not trying to be better than him, yeah. but this is show my father, hey, look, look, look at me. I can sing yeah. just as high as you can, yeah. which, you know, which was hard to do. Yeah. And um, just by singing loud doesn't mean, you know, you're, you, you also got to be in tune. Yeah. You know, you also got to be in rhythm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not just about how loud you are, mm -hmm. and so like with my, with my father, he's very, you know, his his voice was very, you know, he would high, but his it, it was, he was very in tune, mm -hmm. you know, and so we were um, like you singing with your son, and it's yeah. just what he tries to do, you mm -hmm. know. It's like so we're like for me, I was fortunate enough to have my father, mm -hmm. and then also again, like you said, we had some great singers in mm -hmm. our family, yeah. you know, and so uh, hearing them and knowing that. Like for me, you know, like we, I sing Shake It, you know, we sing Shake It together mm -hmm. and I sing Shake It with my dad. I've sing in the ceremony, uh, in ceremonies also, but my comfort zone again is dancing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I, I'll, I'll dance first before I'll sing, Yeah. you know, and I, you know, how older I'll get, I'll, I'll probably dance until I can't dance anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's what I'll probably do, you know, as I get older is I'll probably dance more than sing, mm -hmm. but again, singing does take you have to it steps to singing yeah you, you know you you can't just get right in there again mm -hmm. and sing you know like that's what another thing like that's why i was bringing up the book like you know you gotta you gotta um have a have a mentor yeah or something like that you mm -hmm. know and that's just something that i hope again we look into yeah as we go on with classes and, yeah you know regalia making and and just a lot of um other things that the programs have. Yeah, yeah, and I was I was sharing this earlier too. What like you said, and and um, I was sharing with my partner, and uh, we were talking about because she said the same thing. She said, "Man, she goes, uh, she goes, man, you and Jimmy sounded really good, you know." Mm -hmm. And and, uh, and yeah, I go, my cousin Mike said that, and like a couple people said that, you know. And mm -hmm. and I told her, I said, "Yeah, I feel like uh, Jimmy was trying to, you know, like." take it up a little bit on me and then I said <laughs> take it and, up not. yeah and I go and, and I go and not that he was like trying to overpower I go but I could like feel the energy in him yeah you know I could feel it like vibrating off of him and yeah. and like he was going louder and and uh and I told her I said yeah I said you know like uh I know one day he's gonna go past where I'm at you know and yeah. he's gonna go further and and I go and I'm okay with that you know yeah. and I go and I go my main thing was uh like what you were saying making sure that 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 harmony and melodies in there, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's beautiful. And, and it's like, sometimes, you know, you don't get that if you didn't learn that, yeah. you know, and it's really important to be mindful because it's a, it's a important part of it, you know, but mm. it's, it's just like the helima and the drum and, and the dancers and the whistles and the rattles and the people dancing on the side, the feet hitting the ground, like all of that's all a part of it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I was saying, I go, yeah, I go, it's like really interesting. I go, cause I could feel like he, he wants to, uh, show me like, Hey, I'm, I'm here, you yeah. know, like <laughs> I'm here kind of yeah. that rites of passage. Like I'm going to eventually go past you. And, and, uh, and I think we were talking about this last time too at cash, you know, and he was saying, yeah, my boy, like I, I know, you know, he's passing me already, you know, yeah. and, and that's how I feel about, you know, my son too is like, he's gonna, and, and it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And and the part that it makes me think about too is, you know, it, it's it's interesting sometimes because I remember the one time I had an opportunity to sing with Uncle Marcy and I was probably only about fourteen maybe yeah and there was no but no other singers there and uh, and he he had the rattle and he was like handing it like who wants to grab it you yeah. know and I was like ah <laughs> oh, man I, I you know and and I regret not doing that you know not. Yeah. And, and I know he just needed a little little break. That was yeah. it. You know, he didn't need me to do a whole lot of singing, mm -hmm. but it was the opportunity. You know that that I passed up because I was a little shy. And yeah. And then when I sang last night, um, one of the boys were in there, and I was kind of looking around and waiting for somebody to say, "Hey, we got this," or "Who's gonna sing?" And yeah. And then finally, they're, "Hey, you gonna sing?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I looked around and. That one young boy was like, "Hey, he goes, you want you want me to sing with you?" And and so probably about the third song or fourth song, he said, 
he's man it's been a while since we sang and i know he's like only like 17 you know <laughs> yeah. 16 or 17 and and i go yeah the last time we sang i go you were probably just like 11 years old you know yeah. and and he goes yeah i was he goes and uh and then so we were talking about that afterwards and he goes uh he goes hey how come uh how come you let me sing with you i go I go, well, if nobody wants to sing, I'm going to, whoever wants to get up there and sing, I'm going to sing with, you know, yeah. and I go, and even if you're a beginner or I said, whatever, I said, I'll, I'll make it work. And, and that's what I told him, I go, I just need you to give me a little bit of air and, and uh, make sure you do that. And he goes, yeah, I remember that, you know, and I, and I go, yeah, I go, it's, you know, sometimes I go, uh, I remember when people would ask me to sing and I go, man, I like the singer and I, I want to just listen to them, you know, yeah. I don't want to sing with them. I want to listen to yeah. them. And, and then sometimes, you know, like, um, with older singers too, you're like, oh yeah, I want to sing, but I want to make it not sound good, you know, kind yeah. of like thinking like that too. And, <laughs> and so I was telling Olivia, I said, I don't know if people don't want to sing with me or there yeah. just was no singers there or yeah. what happened. I said, <laughs> but that, that little guy ended up singing and I go, and he was only probably 11 or 12 at the time. I said, yeah. and I go, but it all worked out how it's supposed to, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the, I mean, the singing is, you know, I know, um, I, there are certain singers that you know who's singing, you know, like if, if you don't, if you, if you hear it, and, but you don't see the person singing, you know who it is, mm -hmm. you know, because you know the uh, unique voice mm -hmm. that they have. And so that's one of the things that I really enjoyed when we used to dance Shakehead. Mm -hmm. You could hear, you know, who, who's coming up, you mm -hmm. know them singing and what groups they had and oh that group's coming up and go watch them yeah. you know just things like that yeah. and so that that was a lot of fun to watch back in the day mm -hmm. and again you know i i don't want to be like i'm an old head but you know yeah. back then it was just like three three maybe four mm -hmm. groups at the time you yeah. know so that was those those were fun times you mm -hmm. know at the uh, day under the oak and you know mm -hmm. certain area, times like that yeah. but it was always uh you know we always had a great time dancing and the, uh, as I get older, I appreciate more of the regalia mm -hmm. than before. You yeah. know? Before it's all about dancing, mm -hmm. and then as I got older, then it was about singing, and then mm -hmm. now it's about you know regalia. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of I went by steps. Yeah. But um, I that's what the thing I always wanted to talk about was like just to make sure, you know, not everybody follow what I had done, but just make sure everybody follows steps to get there. Yeah. That's all. That's all I I've ever I've ever. You know, I hope some they do. You know, mm -hmm. with especially with all these classes. Yeah. Well, and I and I hope too. And and I think, like making it, making the door open for people to come in and say, "Hey, how, what do you think about this?" You know, and and that's what I try to tell people. I said, you know, don't. Uh, I go like when it comes down to it. I go, you know, we're we we're protective. I go, but like we know this is bigger than us. Yeah. You know, and 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 we're humble enough to to sit down and have a conversation, you know, and, and I go, we're all open to it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we're not going to, if somebody comes and asks, we're not going to tell you like, uh, well, we don't know, like, don't talk to us about it, yeah, you know, and, right. and I think like even with the podcast and having the conversations and talking to people is that the ones of us who've grown up in this are open to teach and, mm -hmm. and to share and, but it's just making the time to have that conversation, you know, and I think yeah. that's what a lot of us um, are looking for, you yeah. know, to somebody to show that interest. And, and I think like we were saying earlier, you know, people older than us, the older dancers and singers knew when we were, we were ready or almost ready to take that next step, Yeah, you know, and they came and, and started to talk and invest more time in us. And, and I think that's the part of, again, taking the initiative to, to want to go about it the best way, you know, that, that they can. And it's by talking to people who've been there, you know, yeah. and have done it and, and, and I think we're all in a place to, to share in a good way, even if we don't want to help or yeah. say we can't help because it might conflict with kind of how we feel or how we were taught. Yeah. But to at least extend that invitation to people to come and ask and, and uh, let us know what they're doing, you know, because mm -hmm. I think when it comes down to it, you know, like Graham used to always say that, you know, there's going to be a day when all you people are dancing again, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that day is here, you know, like... Mm -hmm. All these groups are here, and you know, for for a while there, we were loaning out flickers, and and then the, kind of the same thing, like people are not taking care of them, and yeah. like, oh man, I, <laughs> well, we better get those uh, those those dyed ones, you know, and yeah. let, let people use those, and and just because like you know, 
dancers shouldn't be going out there with all this stuff on, you yeah. know, and that happens a lot because people don't have enough stuff. And so that, that goes back to, you know, how do I connect to somebody who can help us get mm -hmm. to that place? And, and I think, again, grow in, in those teachings and go, yeah, like we're going to follow this until we know what we're supposed to do, you know, yeah. and I think that's the part I've, I've learned for what's missing here. You know, I get a lot of that from um, my partner's culture and their ceremonies, yeah. you know, what's missing here. And, and like we've had that conversation with you about, you know, growing up and having your tradition strong on both sides of your family, yeah. you know, and, and you're able to, to balance that and, and see what's not here and, and have something for that. Yeah, you know? fill it in on this yeah. side, you know. And yeah, you and that's important because, like, we... I haven't had that for the longest time, you know, mm -hmm. and um, my my other kids' moms didn't, you know, not one was not tribal and didn't have, you know, culture. Yeah. And the other, uh, my middle daughter's mom didn't grow up in culture, you mm -hmm. know, and and uh, not their culture, grew up in other culture, tribal culture, but then now having my partner now who's strong in the culture, you know, their family and being able to go, man, this is like, what's so missing over here, you know, yeah. it really helps me out and holds me to another standard and it helps me see things differently, you know, and, yeah. and I really appreciate it because I, I know the seriousness of what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think it's important that people understand it is serious, you know, when yeah. they start to get involved that got to be really responsible with it and, you know. Yeah, I don't know how, like with these classes, like you were saying earlier, you know, uh, regalia classes is going to be used in ceremony. I mean, like they said, you know, oh, we're not making ceremonial stuff. It is going to get used. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's going to, it, it's going to be in there, mm -hmm. you know, and so it also goes, I mean, I mean, I know things change today, mm -hmm. you know, like I was talking to my cousin about like, you know, um, on YouTube, you know, uh, there's, there's a uh, recording of you know, some tribes hunting, mm -hmm. you know, where they're at and, you know, you know, of the deer or elk or, you know, where they, they, this is their business, you know, and so, and, you know, back in history in, in the day, you know, it, it was sacred to go hunt mm -hmm. for deer. Yeah. It was sacred to go hunt for elk. And, you know, like you, you would talk to your, your medicine man or your cultural leader and they'll tell you, oh, go this way over here. There should be deers over there, you know, and, and that was very, you know, even hunting was ceremonial. But again, you know, using that as a sport and mm -hmm. then, you know, and YouTube and, and I know it becomes a business, yeah. you know, and I understand, again, you know, on, on, on tribal land, there's not too many uh, jobs and opportunity mm -hmm. to, to, you know, uh, support your family. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things come up and yeah, it, eventually they're going to do it, you know, and mm -hmm. it, again, like, not only here, I, I've seen other tribes do that, you know, and just, just want to make sure that, you know, we, we keep things spiritual as mu as best we can when yeah. it comes to those kind of things mm -hmm. and, 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 and make sure we teach them why we do these things, mm -hmm. you know? So I yeah. mean, again, I see that. And that's, that's important when, when you bring that up, it's, it's like that, um, that reciprocity of, of getting the blessing to do this, yeah. you know, and then not only that, giving something to get something. Yeah. You know, and, and putting something down, that offering, you know, is important. And, and I think it's, it really gets overlooked, mm -hmm. you know, and, and because that's why you do that. You know, this is why we're asking for, you know, the, the blessing to go and, and hunt or to go and gather or to go and start building our outfit, whatever it may be. You know, yeah. we're, we're asking for that so it gets done in the right way, you mm -hmm. know. And a lot of times it's, it's like you said, things change and, and, but those basic things are important, you know, and, and are really sometimes the most important parts of it, you yeah. know, of, of getting that, that blessing to go ahead and do this, yeah. you know, and, and that's what I was telling, you know, like I, I help out Scotts Valley's tribe a lot, you know, and, and, um, cause they're, they're a community who, who've, you know, we've known growing up only through fast pitch, you yeah. know, and, and, <laughs> and, you know, they had all the things happen to them, relocation and, they're still landless, you know, yeah. and, and, and then you got people in their family who want to be involved in culture. And, and, uh, you know, we were talking one time and, and it was kind of, it was really interesting how, um, 
it all came about, you know, and it was it was in a respectful way that they asked, mm-hmm. you know, that we want to do this because we want better things for our kids and their future yeah. and the generations behind them. And and it was really respectful and, and responsible. And and but there was still parts of like, well, we got to talk about this. This is this. Yeah. And, and I remember one time we were, we were uh, having a, you know, singing and because the kids were shy to dance and. So we were showing them some of the dances and this is how you dance to this song and this is what this song is for. Yeah. And, and we were singing and one of the uh, ladies was recording, you know, and and I didn't realize it until about halfway through. And and so I asked them, I said, hey, can you, uh, you know, can you delete those? You know, I said, because yeah. these songs are, they're not, they're not mine to say you can do that, you know, and 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 they did, you know, and mm-hmm. I said, and, and if somebody, you know, eventually you know, somebody here has to learn to sing, but you guys got to like go through all this first, you know, and so I can commit to help out and sing for you guys until somebody's ready to take that step. I go, but the way they're going to have to do it is they're going to have to come and we're going to have to sit down and yeah. they're going to have to dance. And then eventually they're going to have to get up there with us while we're singing, you know, me and Haim and, um, you know, whoever comes, Pi or whoever's there who yeah. wants to help. And we tell them like, you know, this eventually like you guys can have to be up here. So that way you can not have to depend on us to show up all the time. Mm-hmm. Somebody will learn the songs and start singing for you guys. But but to know that these songs come from all of these places and, and you have to acknowledge that when you dance and say, yeah. like, hey, these are the songs that these guys shared with us. And and we got permission to sing them and and we're going to do it the best way we can, you know, and. And I go, it's not a big thing, you know, to, yeah. to just acknowledge and say this is how we learned and this is why. Because you guys have the right intention of why you want to do it. Yeah. But make sure you guys go through all of that. And, and it's still the, the part of, um, you know, they're comfortable at big times. You know, I've invited yeah. them to the roundhouse a few times and they'll come, you yeah. know. And, and I tell them, I said, this is like where you see the difference between showing up to dance at a big time once and actually be in ceremony the whole time. Yeah. You know, there's a difference. And, mm. and I know it's um, uh, something they're trying to adjust to, you know, because it's, it's not an easy thing to, to be here all the time when ceremony is going on. And, yeah. and, it, and you can show up. And we've probably showed up and danced a few times. And it's like, man, we can go all night, you know. Yeah. And, and <laughs> they're ready to shut it down one day, and that's it, you know. <laughs> and, and I think that's the part of, you know, when they're ready, you know, I tell them it's, this is here, you know, and I yeah. want to invite you and this is here to come and see what it looks like. Cause this is the bigger part of what you're committing to. Yeah. And, and it's interesting to see the, they don't rush into it. You know, I yeah. like that they don't rush into it and, and uh, they respect that. And I, and I really enjoy that they take that respect and responsibility in a good way. I, I think, I guess, you know, the, with that, I think in the, in a, in a, if I were, let's say, if I were to take, if I were going to be an instructor for, let's say, for flickers, mm-hmm. I, I, to to try to probably make it better, I would say, okay, it's going to be a six week course. Mm-hmm. First, we're gonna we're gonna know each other. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go to ceremonies. Mm-hmm. You know, we're gonna. Yeah. How long can you be in a, at a ceremony? There's there's four day ceremony. There's two night ceremonies. <laughs> can you last through all that? Yeah. You know. Can, can you, you know, dance, you know, or, or sing? Okay, now after the course is over, okay, now we, I know who you are. Mm-hmm. I know what you want. You yeah. know, I know you really want this bad. Okay, mm-hmm. now we'll, we'll make the flicker. Yeah. I mean, I guess if I were to do one, I, I would probably try to do it like that. You mm-hmm. know, like you get bring your own flicker, bring your own birds, you know, bring yeah. your own feathers. Um, I think maybe that would probably be, a better way of doing it mm-hmm. but again that's you know you can't but i'm just saying mm-hmm. if you want to do a class like you're saying how long can you be at the ceremony yeah before we make this stuff you know yeah. how long can you be there because you know as you and me know it's it's a long process yeah you know, ceremonies are long mm-hmm. ceremonies in big times are totally different yeah you know and so um maybe that's would be the only way i would probably yeah try to instruct people yeah and, and that's and that's the hard part is is like and sometimes, you know, it's hard to even say that, to be comfortable, to have a relationship, to be honest and say that, yeah. you know, and because and, and I've, I always tell people there's, 
like we got big time Indians and we got ceremony people, you yeah. know, and, and there's, it's different, you know, and, and that's not to like say, oh, cause we go to ceremony that we're, we're better, mm. but what it is talking about is the commitment, you know, yeah. and, and that this is a lifelong commitment for us. And I think, you know, if you were to say like, uh, like your scenario of, of uh, six weeks, and and you got 20 people it'll it'll dwindle down to a yeah. few who can commit to it you yeah. know and and that's really what it is you know only a few will really commit to that process and i think that's the point of where you start to find out what people's intentions are and why mm -hmm. they want to learn or or why they're showing up you yeah. know and and i think that's the hard part is you don't know that when you just show up and it's like hey i signed up and i'm here where's my stuff at, you know, what am I, mm -hmm. why don't you show me? And, and even like, you know, when we did the, the top knot class, it was, uh, we ended up having to finish some of them because the girls didn't, you yeah. know? And, and so it was the part of like, you know, we said like, if you're going to come here, you got to be here to finish this. Now this is being left undone and it's on us to finish it, yeah. you know, but then they, you don't want nothing to happen to me. So I yeah. Finish it. yeah. And then they come back and go, well, where's my, did you finish my, my headpiece? You know? And it's like, Oh man, like, you know, we don't want to give it to you, you know, yeah. you didn't fit in, but then it's like, oh, well we sign and it get into all this other stuff that, yeah. you know, shouldn't be a part of the conversation, you know, and, and, but it, I think the good thing out of that is there are a few of the, the ladies who, who did learn, you know, that didn't know how, mm. and they learned and they know how to do it now, you know, yeah. which is good. And, and then it's like trying to tell them like, these are the protocols. This is, you know, what you want to look for. This is what you should do. And, but since you know how to do it, you got to figure out what your rules are before you start teaching people that way yeah. they know that you have some rules and responsibilities of what you're going to show them. And, and I, and I told one of the young ladies, I said, don't let, I said, don't let work pressure you into you, pressure you into feel like you have to do this. You're obligated to do this for work. Cause you're not, mm -hmm. you know, I said, if, you don't feel comfortable doing it. You gotta, you gotta speak up and say that. And she's like, yeah, I, I will. Like, yeah. Like if I don't like how they're trying to make me do it, I, I won't do it. You know? And I yeah. go and and that's not wrong. I said, that's not mm -hmm. wrong to, to have those values and standards. I go, cause at the end of the day, like you're saying, you know, we're, we're the ones that are putting ourselves out there yeah. when people don't follow or it gets left not complete, you know, and it's mm -hmm. just sitting somewhere now in a storage room or wherever it's at, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think all of that can happen really easily. You know, especially mm -hmm. when, you know, sometimes we're working in communities where everybody don't get along, Yeah. you know, and then you're like, oh, well, we're not going to finish it because so-and-so's there and like, you shouldn't even come here if that's where you're at right now, you know, right. fix, fix that relationship or, or, you know, don't bring it here, you bring mm -hmm. that, whatever your differences are. And, but a lot of times that doesn't, you can't really say that, you know, it's yeah. like, cause it's open for everybody, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> and I think that's where that that kind of clash happens, you know? Yeah. That, and that's what I'm saying. Like for me, I, I'm down, I'm down to showing anyone, anybody, if they want to learn or they want to dance or they want to sing or they want to make anything. Yeah. Come over, bring your stuff, mm -hmm. you know, come over and we'll do it together. You yeah. know, like, let's, you know, you, are you, you, do you dance? Yeah. Well, come on. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I know, you, let's do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not opposed to not teaching yeah. anybody. Um, but I just, make sure once it's done again in the right way of yeah. doing it again like you said like, well, I'm, I'm making myself vulnerable you know to to this so um if you come over mm -hmm. then yeah we'll do it you know yeah, yeah you, you got your stuff yeah come on over i mean just the same way i had my you know how i had my flicker you know mm -hmm. i had to work for that yeah and even like my son who's 20 you know and he has his own stuff yeah. but i mean i keep his stuff yeah. because i feel like when he's ready mm -hmm. and he's 20 and yeah. he, and I'm sure he will. Yeah. But you know, again, I'm like, well, when he's ready, I'll give, I'll let him keep it, yeah. you know, but right now I'll hold on to it. Mm -hmm. But even then, you know, that's how I feel about Brigelia, mm -hmm. you know, like how, uh, how, who, whose hands it, it, it's in, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, again, like, I just want to make sure with, you know, with the episode here that we make sure we look into what we're doing with these classes, mm -hmm. you know? And again, I know, there are some very respectful elders that that um, did classes, mm -hmm. and 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 I'm happy for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just I'm just saying, let's just make sure we're looking at the future for our kids, mm -hmm. 
That's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm not, you know, if, if, if people are um, taking these jobs or, or uh, to teach, just to make sure that they be mindful mm -hmm. about who they're teaching mm -hmm. and, you know, about the gathering of, of, of the riggings. Mm -hmm. Because again, like I've seen classes like for whistles, mm -hmm. you know, and I've seen um, where, where if you come to class, you know, we'll have the supplies there and we'll show you how to make mm -hmm. whistles. Now, I made whistles before, you know, for Shakehead, and it took me a long time to find the right, you know, you know river cane, right bamboo. Yeah. It took me a while to find the right area mm -hmm. of where to make, you know, to make which area sounds the best if mm -hmm. I make the whistle out of it. Yeah. And it took me, I had to wait until a certain time until that, until the, the river cane was ready to mm -hmm. get picked. Then I had to wait longer to dry it out, yeah. you know, and so that part right there in a class is skipped. Yeah. Because, um, like my my uncle from from Arizona, he would he would teach us like if we're gonna pick anything from nature, we're gonna pray for it first. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna offer you know thank you for letting us take this, and then we pull the what we need from mm -hmm. from Mother Earth, and so. Again, like just certain things like that with the, I mean, that's just one example yeah. with the whistle. Like it can't be taught in a class where mm -hmm. your river cane's already dry, already pick mm -hmm. in a box. Yeah. And, that, and, and that's my only concern. Yeah. I mean, I, I want everybody to dance. I want mm -hmm. everybody to sing. If you want to dance or sing, mm -hmm. great. I'm all for it. You know, I just want to make sure that we are appreciating it by, yeah. by working for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think too, like like what happens the confusion with like uh, the class is like like there's a difference when you're doing it in your community where mm -hmm. eventually all the people are going to be dancing, yeah. you know, and they have a ceremonial place to dance at. Yeah, they have all of those things versus I'm just going to take ten or twenty people from wherever they come from, and we might make this, and they might not have nowhere to go take it and use it. Yeah. you know, and 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 so that. The idea of a class looks good in a place where all the things are there, a place for people to dance, and mm -hmm. you've got family teaching. That works for a community, you know, but it doesn't necessarily apply for another place that's going to invite people from a bunch of different communities. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the confusion of like, oh, yeah, let's do a class. It doesn't always translate the same, yeah. you know, and, and, and I think it's, it's like a, it's kind of like that old... Mm -hmm. um, that old adage of uh, the melting pot, you know, we throw everything in there and it's going to apply for everybody. Yeah. And that's what <laughs> kind of happens, you know, yeah. and, and then it becomes like, uh, like I said, it like becomes a free for all for everybody to do whatever they want. And then I was just sharing today with one of the relatives. I said, you know, one of the things that made me kind of like pause on, on doing too much was uh, Uncle Nelson one time said, he goes, well, what happens if you get Indian sick? Like, do you have somebody to doctor you? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no. He said, There's, those people aren't here no more, those medicine people. Yeah. He goes, so you need to be careful. You know, like, we all need to be careful. Because mm -hmm. that's why I don't tell you guys everything, you know. And, yeah. And at the same time, exactly what you're saying, because he's not going to take on if somebody misuses that, you yeah. know. And, and then at the same place where if you don't have people to help you, in that situation, like that's the outcome you don't want because you want to be curious and you want to learn or you just want to put it together without knowing why or yeah. what the rules are and just gathering whenever. And I think that's the, the hard part is when I tell people, I've shared that Indian sick with people, they're like, have no clue what that means, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, oh, well, we'll go to the doctors. Like, no, it's different. We're talking different kind yeah. of doctors, you know, mm -hmm. like different kind of healing and and i think some people don't even like equate you're talking about a different like a spiritual sickness they have mm -hmm. no idea because they don't know that spiritual part of things you know and yeah and so it's really hard to try to translate that to people who might not even have those basic understandings of this is what can happen yeah you know like it is beautiful when it's all together but if you don't do it right other things can not be so beautiful for you, you yeah. know, and, and maybe your family or you might start hurting people and not even realize it, you mm -hmm. know, and, 
And, but I think it's kind of like uh, the mindset of it's just all good, you yeah. know, and, and it is when it's all done right, but when it's not, like it, it can be just all bad, mm -hmm. you know, and, and but a lot of people, it's kind of like, uh, you know, and, and like I hear my, my father-in-law say this all the time. He says, you know, the, he goes, people believe like the spirits are just these good old jolly things. And he goes, and, and they have feelings too. Mm -hmm. He goes, and if they get mistreated, they get mad, you mm -hmm. know, and people don't think that. They think it's just all jolly and everything is good. Like they don't do things that are to hurt you. Mm -hmm. He goes, but they will if you mess with them, you mm -hmm. know, and. And, I, and I'm thinking because, like, I didn't, you know, we didn't grow up around or have that part of, you know, there was a few people who knew how to doctor, but not really that medicine person to heal in that yeah. way, you know. And, and so I didn't really get that idea until he started expanding on that more, you mm -hmm. know, going, man, like, wow, like, I really need to, like, make sure I share this. So that way people, whatever, you know, like, mm -hmm. you don't need to believe me, just, you know, like just be cautious with what you do and, yeah. and I'm sharing it because I care you know and and I know it's bigger and bigger than what we understand yeah and so just be mindful of that that you know these these things are just not all about the the positive there is there is negative too and, yeah. and, and that's the, like what you just said like because my mom had told me that a long time ago uh, my my mom told me that you know there's you know, when you're opening your, your spirituality door, right? Mm -hmm. uh, spirits come in, mm -hmm. but there's good spirits and bad spirits. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful mm -hmm. if you're going to open your spirituality door because mm -hmm. you got to look who's coming in and out of there. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not, it's not all good spirits going to come through. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some bad spirits going to come through. So you got to make yourself ready for things like mm -hmm. that. And so I always try to make sure like, you know, I don't open that up and make my kids vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to be, I got to be careful, you know, and what I do, because again, like you said, not all, all spirits are good. There's, mm -hmm. there's bad and there's good spirits, mm -hmm. you know? And so you just, if you're not ready for that and, and, and you don't learn the steps to certain things in that part, you're going to be vulnerable with, you know, mm -hmm. but that's one thing that, um, my mom had told me about spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. And it's important to, to say it in, and even if you don't get the teaching to understand it, but to just mention that, you know, it's, this mm -hmm. is why we be careful. And this is why we ask for the blessing to do this, because we want the good things to come, yeah. you know. And, and, and I think, you know, like hearing Graham say that, too, you know, when that roundhouse door is open, the good and bad comes through there, you know. Yeah. And, and, but we want the good to stay there and, and the bad can't stay in there all the time, but it can come in there, you yeah. know. And, and it's like then hearing, you know, hearing more teachings on it, it really made me understand what she was trying to say, you know, what she was saying that I was, I didn't really fully understand, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think those are things that have to be shared, even if we don't have all of the detail, but to be mindful of like, yeah, exactly what your mom told you, yeah. you know, it's important when that's told to you that you take that with the respect that it's told to you in, because it really is, you know, it's really a, a serious thing that sometimes you know we just get caught up in it's all love and it's all good you yeah. know <laughs> and, and that's the positive outcome of it yeah. but it ain't you know to get there's a whole nother story you know? yeah well for me like you know like today you know all, all the hmm. all the relatives that we have and all the all pomo people that i meet from other tribes you know everybody is supportive everybody is you know everybody wants to learn everybody wants to sing I, and i think that's great you mm -hmm. know and i think um everyone's going in the right direction with the dancing and the singing you know of, of coming um to these uh big times but one the main focus is to make sure that you know you try to make it a ceremony mm -hmm. i mean wh whatever your tribe you're from mm -hmm. you know we always talk about you got to go to ceremony mm -hmm. you know if, if you're going to live that live the life of that, you got to go to a ceremony. Mm -hmm. And no matter what tribe you're from, every tribe has a ceremony. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if you want to learn that, then you got to go to a ceremony. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that even with like, uh, with my uncle, when they were fighting for Oak Flat, you know, it's always about like, if you want to know why he is fighting for it or the pet stronghold is fighting for it, you got to go to a ceremony. Mm -hmm. That's how you really understand 
why he's, you know, fighting for that mm -hmm. area. So to me, like everything is ceremony, you yeah. know, and and I love big time, and I, I and I and I love listening to watching the groups and listening to songs, but again, you know, it's, that's different from ceremony. Yeah. And I hope that you know people know that you know that big time, which is great, mm -hmm. is is not ceremony. It's, yeah. It's from ten to six. Yeah. You know, and so uh, with vendors, you know, mm -hmm. which which is great. You know, yeah. I I love the vendors. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about make sure you also go to the ceremony. Yeah. And there are some people like we had ceremony this weekend that I seen here, which was great. I was like, oh yeah, you know, they 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 do the big time, they do what they do at their job, and they come to the ceremony. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, like yeah. that that made me really feel good, you know, yeah. that I seen them out there like that. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I want to make sure that, you know, like again, I'm not saying uh I'm the perfect guy that does a lot. I, mm -hmm. I make mistakes too, mm -hmm. but you know, I just want to make sure that we fall in the spirituality of this culture, this mm -hmm. tradition and the roundhouse and the, reg and the regalia and mm -hmm. riggins. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, the part of it, like you said, a lot of people don't know why big times even came about, yeah. you know, and, and even though the, the idea of, of big time was a, a social gathering of our people, before colonization, it, it really was rare that we got together like that, you yeah. know, or we mixed those different spirits together mm -hmm. in the same place, you know, and, and, and that's like evident with the call dance, you know, not, not all the big heads get together all the time, yeah. you know, and it's rare times when that does happen. And, and I was telling uh, somebody from Covalo and they're asking me about big times. And I said, you know, I go far as I understand it was, it was kind of to let people know we were still here and still dancing. The people that held on to it were still yeah. dancing. And that's how the, the Day in the Oaks came about. It wasn't a, a thing where, you know, we all decided to go there. It was to say, like, hey, yeah, we agree. The people are still dancing. We're going to come and share for our own people to know mm -hmm. that we're still here. And, and that's how, like, that whole idea of big time came about, you know. And, yeah. And, and even then it wasn't all the vendors, it was just the, those elders getting together, mm -hmm. bringing the dance and sharing that time and some hand game here and there, you know, and yeah. and then it morphed into what it is today, you know, and, and, and that has a place, you know, yeah. that has a place to get people together and, and uh, get our community together and mm -hmm. us visiting and, and sharing and talking and telling the stories and then, but not only to show up there, like you said, then, then go to ceremony, you know, yeah. come to ceremony and, and really, you know, take, take yourself to that place where you're going to get that understanding of, of how come and why we do this. And, and, and especially if you want good things in your life, you know, that's where you're going to go to <laughs> yeah. help get all that in order and get you on that place and that path to where you want to be, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, but I hope people, you know, like you said, when they get the opportunity to listen to this, to not, think that we're trying to say we're the cultural authority over things, mm -hmm. you know, but it's to share the values of what's important to us. And, and I think we have to talk about it so that way people know that there is protocol and values and ways to do things. Yeah. It wasn't just we can do what we want to do because we're, we're Indians, you know, or we're, we're Pomo and we can just do it, you know, and yeah. cause it was never that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so hopefully people, you know, take the opportunity to listen and, and understand what we're trying to say here, you know, yeah. and, 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 uh, you know, not get the wrong intention and, and, but it's hard when you talk about things that can be controversial, you yeah. know, and, and people can, as we know, get offended real easily, you mm -hmm. know, cause it's like, like maybe they think we're talking about them, you know, and it's, yeah. that's not the point. It's just to share. And, and some will say, well, at least they're trying, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's not it either. Yeah. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah, and that's the part I, I hope, you know, it'll, it'll spark that conversation that each community needs to have, too, you know, and, and say, this is how we're going to teach what we have over here, mm -hmm. you know, so that way there is that respect. And because and, I know, like you said, you know, thinking back on, on you saying like, oh, when we heard certain singers, we knew who was dancing yeah. and we want to go sit down and watch, you know, yeah. we didn't want to go anywhere else. We wanted to go and watch. And, and I think that's the part of you know, I guess there wasn't always a lot of vendors for us to get caught up and stuck at the vendor yeah. booths, you know, like we heard the songs and we came back because we knew that's what we came there for, yeah. you know, and, and then getting to watch and see the uniqueness and, and what made that place 
and those people who they are you saw that you know mm -hmm. and, and heard that in the songs and I think for me that's thinking back on it you know I remember those times and remember like even that uh that one old fella from the coast chicken you know he's talk about how he used to dance and yeah first one really looking around in everybody's face when he's dancing you know yeah. and, and now everybody does that you know yeah. and don't even know where that who did that you know mm -hmm. and so I think those are things that are important to to share and, and hopefully spark like I said those reminders and memories of those times because I know people you know have those those memories too you yeah know? and creates an opportunity even people to want to maybe jump on this sometime with us and share yeah. kind of where what they remember yeah and, and you know like if anybody has anything you know that we're talking about they can they can email and call and we could sit down and you know have discussion about it mm -hmm. you know and there I always say maybe there's some I'm not seeing mm -hmm. that you can tell me yeah. you know and and and, I'm, and, and it, if you do have something on your side, then yeah, let us know. We're, I, we're, I'm always, you know, here, we're here to talk and yeah. and see their side, you know, because mm -hmm. maybe we don't know their side, yeah. you know. And but again, like when I was the topic, we, you know, we've been talking about talking about, you know, talking about rig rigging classes, and I, you know, I talked to my father and I said, Dad, you know, this is what me and uh, my ego want to talk about, you know. And I told him like, this is what I want to say. This mm -hmm. is what I want to. And I said, you think that's okay? And he was like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, whatever, whatever you have inside, just go ahead and say it. Yeah. You know, I, you know, it, it sounds good to me, mm -hmm. you know. And so I, I just made it make sure that, you know, yeah. my dad had validate that it's okay for me to say it. Mm -hmm. Not saying he was, yeah, I was right. Just, yeah. just saying, yeah, go ahead. You mm -hmm. know, if that's how you feel, yeah. then say it, you know. Yeah. And, and so that made me feel better to say, okay, well, well let's talk about it. You know, yeah. so I just wanted to make sure that. I wasn't stepping on anybody's toes. I wasn't mm -hmm. going to upset anybody. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, we probably will, you know, mm -hmm. when they hear this. But again, I'm, I'm all for support of the Pomo and even all tribes. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of tribes out there that, that are doing the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, with classes. And I understand. So I just want to make sure that. And sometimes I get caught up in those kind of classes. Because mm -hmm. I know down there in, in, in Phoenix, you know, they were having um, ribbon skirt classes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, heck yeah, let me learn how to make a ribbon skirt. Yeah. And you know, one of my friends in St. Carlos is like, why do you want to learn that? That's not our tradition. I go, oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> or, you know, I'm talking all this stuff, yeah. and then all of them are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take this class. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's not even my, yeah. why would I even use it? You know, I just wanted to learn how to sew, really. Yeah. But I'm like, why would I even do that? Then you're right. You know, I, was, I just won't take the class. You know, yeah. and then with, also with the drum, you know, yeah. like, yeah, I'll do, I'll do the drum. Like, wait, I never even we don't even use it, that kind of drum. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I would, you know, I'm talking about classes and then I yeah. want to take stuff that doesn't even pertain to me, you know, yeah. that I shouldn't. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. So like, even I get caught up in stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. And then I have to step back and like, or someone has to tell me and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Now I understand. But again, it's, it's easy to fall into that. Yeah. You know, that's all. I mean, I understand, mm -hmm. but I just want to make sure that, you know, we, we we just look at the spirituality of it. Mm -hmm. That's that's all I'm I'm saying. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, and hopefully that's what you know people will, will think about and, and get out of this. You know, because yeah. it, it's really you know out of out of love that we're sharing and saying these things, and and it's not to be critical, you know, yeah. and and but it, it it can get critical if like we don't clarify why we're trying to talk yeah. about this, you know, and mm -hmm. and I think it's important to have these conversations because I know people want to, yeah. you know, just how do we go about and do it? You know, how yeah. do we get together in a central place? And it doesn't even mean everybody needs to get together. Just start it somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. in your community or where and wherever you're at with, with the people you go to ceremony with. And, and then maybe we can all get together sometime and, and have a conversation. So we, we uh, mm -hmm. help the people who want to learn know this is, this is a good way to go about it. You know, this is how it was done before we were here yeah know? and there was a value and a reason why they did it like this you know and and i think it's it'll be it'll be received good you know? and i think like even with the pomo culture and the dancing and the singing you know there's a lot of people that are that are non-pomos that shoot they dance really good and they sing yeah. really good and it's because it just always came around yeah you know and so you know that that's what I'm saying. Like it's coming around, it, it it'll it you know you'll you'll get it and yeah. you'll be there. You know, and and you enjoy the the tradition and the spirituality of mm -hmm. it. But 
that's that's all I'm saying. It's just to make sure that we we follow the spirituality of it, mm-hmm. you know. And I know we can't go back mm-hmm. in time. Yeah. But we're here now. I just want to make sure that you know we all follow. Um, make sure we follow the steps of spirituality and gathering mm-hmm. and understanding of dancing and singing and and making riggins. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right. Well, I know we had a ceremony this weekend and we're very tired and but thanks for coming out and yeah. you know uh speaking uh, late night here at the tribal building so yeah. <laughs> thanks a lot well well if anything comes up any feedback we'll get back on and yeah. whoever wants to again whoever wants to talk on here and talk about about classes and about rigging me just just email me and we'll talk about it all right sounds good all right, oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you all for tuning in to the Fight for Existence podcast. If you guys want to keep up with the podcast in general, what you could do is follow the social media account. The Instagram account is going to be Fight for Our Existence. Again, that's Fight Number Four Our Existence. Go ahead and give that a follow. And if you guys have any questions for us or you guys would like to be on the podcast, in the Instagram, there's a link. Go ahead and click that. No matter what kind of platform you guys are listening to this podcast on, there's always that plus or that follow button. So go ahead and click that so you guys can get notifications when we upload our next episode. And if you guys are listening on Spotify, what you could do is go ahead and rate the show. And if you guys are only listening on Apple Podcasts, what you can also do is write a review for the show. Thank you all for tuning in to the Fight for Existence podcast, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs>